hello and welcome back to my channel this video is going to be on how to future proof your cybersecurity career and while there is so much demand for cybersecurity jobs and cybersecurity professionals to fill in those roles for example there are going to be 3.5 million jobs for cybersecurity by 2025 and as of right now we don't have enough cybersecurity professionals to fill in those roles but while you're thinking about starting your career in cybersecurity another thing to think about is making sure that you're continuing to grow and future proofing yourself so that you're able to do really well in your career as well as being able to grow into more senior positions in the cybersecurity. So these are a few steps for you to take to help you grow in your cybersecurity career. One of the first things on this list is one that I constantly bring up and that is keeping up with cybersecurity news and trends. This includes the different hacks that are happening, what attack vectors are being used by different threat actors. This also includes the new tools that may be coming out or updates from ongoing security events. Basically cybersecurity is very fast paced and there's going to be new trends and news articles coming out every single day, multiple times a day and a part of your job is also to keep up with current events in cybersecurity. And I know that sounds like a lot to manage, but trust me, once you get your system down, it makes it a whole lot easier and it doesn't require you to spend hours on hours scrolling through different articles because, because they can really lead you down a rabbit hole. For example, what I do is I have an RSS feed. I use Feedly and basically it just consolidates all of the different blogs and articles and, and forums that I follow so that they're able to all be in one place and I don't have to jump around to different websites for different news. And that way you can see the most viewed or the most important articles for you to see. I do have my OPML file for Feedly that I've shared before on this channel. I'll try to find it again and link it somewhere or I think it's on my Patreon and anyone can see it. So basically you can take that and import it into Feedly and you'll be able to see all of these security articles and forums and it'll bubble up important information up to the top for you. So that you're able to keep up with the top trending news headlines because those are typically going to be the most important. But just taking maybe 15, 20 minutes a day to read those headlines, especially if there's an ongoing incident or if you know that a vendor that your company uses has been on the news for a security incident, then I would definitely you know, keep an eye on that just in case there's something that needs to be done on your end or anything that senior leadership may need to know. Staying ahead of the curve and making sure that you're one of the first people to know when it comes to security incidents and things like that in your company is going to be one of the best ways to add longevity to your career career because then you'll also start gaining that reputation of like hey David or Helen is really good at keeping up with cybersecurity trends and and then eventually you'll start becoming that go-to person for people to rely on to, to know what's up and coming in cybersecurity and that also in a way can make you irreplaceable if, if you're one of the primary people on your team who keep up with current events. The next thing I want to discuss is getting new certifications as you go in your career. So typically when you're just starting out you probably have some kind of a CompTIA certification maybe it's a security plus, A plus, network plus depending on where you are, maybe it's a GX certification. So I really think that these certifications are awesome for when you start in your career. But once you start growing, you may find yourself in a point where maybe you want to go into a specific area in cybersecurity that's a little bit more niche. Maybe you want to go into ethical hacking. Maybe you want to go into digital forensics. Maybe you want to become a malware analyst. Maybe you want to go into reverse engineering. All these different things may require a certain set of skills and also a certain expectation to get new certifications. For example, if you want to go into red teaming, then the CEH or the Certified Ethical Hacking Certification is probably a popular next step to go if you decide that you want to go into offensive security. And then maybe eventually a step above that is the OSCP, which is one of the more highly acclaimed certifications for ethical hackers. So as you move up in your career and become more and more senior, you're going to realize that, hey, maybe to get to the next step, there may be some kind of requirement or maybe a recommendation to get a certification and it only adds to your value personally. So if you get a certification, that may be a reason for you to ask for a higher bonus or ask for a salary increase, or maybe it'll be easier for you to switch companies into a different role that, that maybe has a better career trajectory. And getting that certification may also be kind of that ticket to get your foot in the door for that next job. So definitely don't sleep on certifications, especially as you enter mid and later career, because especially in cybersecurity, there are other fields that may require you to get an MBA or an advanced degree, but typically in cybersecurity, you're not really going to see that unless you're dealing with really technical things and they want you to have a PhD, which which they probably would have hired someone with a PhD out the door. But to advance in your career, you likely won't have to go back to school for a master's degree or for an MBA. I really think that a certification really does speak volumes. And that's not to say that a master's degree in cybersecurity isn't valuable. I do think that it is. But for a lot of cybersecurity job postings that I've seen, it's typically going to ask for 
a bachelor's degree or a master's degree along with XYZ certifications based on the specific job that you're going to go into. So as you're planning out your career path in cybersecurity, always think about what certifications that you might want to add to that career path because it's basically a roadmap for yourself so that, for example, if you want to become a senior security engineer in five years or seven years, what is it going to take to get you there? Is it going to be a certification? Do you need to get your CISSP? When do you plan to take that exam? When are you planning on studying for it? Are you going to be taking any training courses for it? It would definitely make your life a whole lot easier if you do that planning ahead of time so that you know kind of where you're going and also how you're going to get there. The next thing is continuous learning and this one is probably an obvious one, but essentially if you compare the tools and apps and popular third-party vendors that companies are using nowadays for their cybersecurity programs to 10 years ago, that is going to look very different. This is always going to be evolving and companies are always going to be looking for that next best thing to be able to use to enhance their cybersecurity posture. So one way to future-proof your career is to stay on top of the cybersecurity tools and skills that companies are looking for. And one of the ways to do this is every once in a while, even if you're not looking to switch jobs, maybe you've been working at a company for two to three years and you're happy there and you are kind of growing constantly one thing that you can do is to look up a specific job title that you want or maybe the job title that you currently have and take a look at the job postings to see what what skills and tooling companies are expecting you to know while coming into the job based on your specific job title and this will also give you an idea of the up-and-coming tools the skills that companies are now looking for in this specific market not to say that every few years the expected skills or the requirements for a specific job are going to change completely but i do think that it will change over time and of course a great way to do do this is also through conferences which leads me into my next topic in this video so personally i'm someone who loves going to conferences whether you're looking for a job or if you're looking to learn new skills or if you want to network or maybe find a mentor or or anything else i think a conference is a perfect way to kind of grow in your professional career while also being surrounded by a group of people who are also in the same area as you or has the same interest the two types of conferences i'm going to talk about specifically are the general cybersecurity conferences where you are going there to learn different skills or maybe someone done something really cool and they're going to kind of walk you through what they did maybe like a show and tell or maybe there are labs where you're able to follow along and then there are the conferences that are set up by companies specifically maybe a cybersecurity company or tool wants to cultivate more recognition so they will usually put out a free conference typically they're free but other times your company may also pay for it if it's for your professional development and a lot of times nowadays they are online or virtual since since post pandemic a lot of conferences are either hybrid or have that remote option but those are the places where companies are going to show off their new features stats about their tool um, what it can do for your company maybe even new ways to use the tool so basically these two conferences are a really good way to grow in your career and learn new skills without having to do it all on your own it's also a great networking opportunity because you're able to talk to other professionals in cybersecurity maybe they're not in the same exact field as you and they can give you some insight into different areas of cybersecurity that you may want to pivot into in the future remember your career it doesn't have to be one you know straight line you can bounce around between red team blue team maybe go into malware analysis there's so many different areas that you can go into in cybersecurity and i really think that having that background experience really benefits you and can make you a more well-rounded individual. So I would recommend going to a conference at least once a year or if you're able to, then I would recommend going to two conferences, one general cybersecurity conference and maybe one conference maybe hosted by a vendor or a third party or for a specific cybersecurity tool that your company may currently use or may want to use in the future. And the last thing I want to discuss is making sure that you're being open with your manager about your career goals. This is something that I think goes without saying, but honestly, it's really hard to do when you're kind of like in the daily grind and you don't always think about, oh, I need to bring up that I want to go for a promotion next year with my manager. When there's so much going on, especially in different roles, depending on the team that you're in, but honestly, things go really fast and, and you're usually going to be busy. So it's not always going to be top of mind for you to discuss your career goals with your manager, but I think that's one of the most important things to do. You don't have to wait for the end of year or the mid-year review. Those are really just check mark points, but that conversation should be ongoing all throughout the year. Like every few months even, maybe once a month, you can do a check-in with your manager on how you're doing against your goals and where you want to be because your manager won't know that you want that you want a promotion to a senior engineering role by next year if you don't tell them. Even if you work really hard and are really trying to prove yourself, there may be external factors that you aren't aware of. For example, needing to submit paperwork to HR to get a promotion starting even before the end of your review. Maybe your manager might need budget approval from their manager or their manager's manager. So even if you have an awesome 
awesome manager and they really do want to get you that promotion if the wheels don't start turning in the beginning that it'll make it a whole lot harder for them and that resistance can also make it harder for you to get that promotion basically helping your manager help you by letting them know being open about i want to get to this specific position or managing this specific project by next year or in two years what do you think about the trajectory what do you have in mind in terms of how to get there and these are all things that should be an open discussion with your manager as well as of course if you have a mentor i definitely recommend talking to them if they're in a more senior position and have been through promotion cycles at your company or are in the specific role that you want to go into then they may also be a great resource this is another reason why you should always be networking and always and always staying connected with your peers especially while fostering mentorship relationships and this goes both ways you could have a mentor and you could also have mentees who you're mentoring maybe they're currently in college maybe they're just starting out in their career but Mentorship is really a two-way street, so, so I would always take the chance to be able to mentor someone and be able to be the mentee of someone that you look up to in a specific role or in a specific team that you want to be on. Alright, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys have anything to add to this list of how to future-proof your career in cybersecurity. And if you're interested, I recently lowered the price of my course for how to get your first job in cybersecurity as requested by you guys. It is linked in the description below. And if you do decide to enroll, I would love to hear your feedback. And if you like this video, please give a thumbs up up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesdays and sundays at 12 p.m if you have any video topics that you would like to see from me in the future drop them in the comments below thank you guys again so much for watching and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye